Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Meyer Boys Basketball Season Tip-Off Show. I'm Keith Glock, joined by one of our brand new color commentators for the season, Matt Pogue. Matt, what's going on, man? Hey, it's great to be here. Thanks for having me out. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for, you know, loaning yourself out to us for a couple of nights this season. Uh, we appreciate that. Oh, no, very busy schedule. Very busy. I fit in this. <laughs> so big things on tap potentially uh, for this Cougar basketball team in 2018, 2019. Uh, a lot of things that we haven't really seen before in terms of number of captains, just a uh, number of seniors. It, it's, it lends itself to, to the fact that this could be a really huge season for the Cougs. G just general sense, general excitement what are you really looking forward to seeing out on the court from this team this year? Well, I mean, it's going to sound cliche, but I have to say offense and defense. The offense is going to be absolutely stellar. They have so many scores. They have so many different ways to score. But then as soon as they get back and they get back on D, you have to deal with what they're going to have on that side of the court as well. One of the things that I feel like you just have to be aware of is the leadership factor. Uh, six captains, 11 seniors. And we're talking about captains that are all going to play and are all going to score, and they all have a ton of experience. And that's something that you can't really buy in terms of uh, when you compose a team. Uh, it takes a lot of year-round kind of grit. Uh, talk about a little bit about the year-round nature of kind of what they're doing in the you know the summer six a.m.s and, and yeah. what does that do? I mean, you, you know, you're an athlete, you're a player in multiple sports throughout your life. That type of commitment. What kind of cohesion kind of comes with that? Well, you, you really can't buy it. That's a great way to put it because the chemistry that you're going to have from being off the court, on the court, being at practice, going through all the same things together, the grueling workouts, and then when you're done, you get to say to your buddy, hey, we did that. It's over. We made it through that. You just can't buy that because when you get on the court, it's going to show. You're going to be able to see what each other are doing. You're going to know what's coming. You're going to make eye contact and then just immediately know, oh, he's making the cut. Oh, he's ready. He's got my back on D and it's just priceless. Early season that I, I'm, if I had to make a prediction about anything, and this is pretty true of a lot of Grundy coached teams, early in the season, they seem to be a bit more prepared. Do you think that the, the structure of their preseason preparation and offseason preparation benefits them in that way early in the season? Oh, no doubt, no doubt at all. Just being together for that much time, being around each other and having that experience together, it's, you, you really can't beat it. That's the best way to do it if you're going to do it. So I want to talk on the other side of the basketball, and I want to talk defense for a second because, um, you know, year to year, uh, certain coaches have the propensity uh, or the style or the system, whatever you know, word you want to use to describe it, to, well, we're going to play this regardless of the personnel. And it mm -hmm. has not really been the, the way that Chris Grundy coached teams have operated here. Um, and you've seen them year to year pop in and out of defenses. Uh, I know in seeing this team as much as I have that he would prefer to play a matchup zone mm -hmm. and a trap. And rarely can you play both in the same season. Yeah. This year, it seems as though they're going to have the luxury to play what they call the 1-3-1 and that matchup zone. Talk about that a little bit and the problems it's going to present for opposing teams. Well, they've got the personnel to run it perfectly. They've got the length. They can cut off passing lanes. They've got the speed and everyone being on the same page with the experience of running the trap together that you can really cause some point guards to, to struggle even getting the ball across the timeline. I guess we should probably explain a little bit about what the matchup zone kind of entails and the mismatches it creates. You have situations where some of your bigs, Chris Rabaya or Rohan Prakash, step out on the three-point line against a guard and, and teams that don't prepare for it uh, think, oh my God, we have a, a great matchup here. Let's either try to blow by or, you know, and it's exactly what the defense wants you to think. And, you know, talk a little bit about that from having been a player that if you're not prepared for something like that, how much havoc it could cause you? Oh, well, I mean, immediately you're looking up and you see somebody who's six foot eight looking down at you and you're saying, I was, I was expecting somebody my height. You start to think about the way you're going to dribble. You start to question, where's my next pass going? You're wondering, how do I actually execute my offense? Because you're so worried about the defender now and not your game. Let's do a little fun exercise uh, here. I want you to pick a player and tell me a guy off the beaten path of the you know, the Fremelts or the uh, Riley Greens of the world, the Rohans of the world, that you're excited to watch play this year? 
I have to go with uh, Chris Rabio probably. All right. uh, Why is that? He'll be coming off the bench. He's one of the people that's uh, a little bit younger on the team, so he's you know kind of coming into this thing that's full of seniors, and he's got to earn his keep. He's got to show that he you know belongs on the floor, but he's got a lot of talent. He's got a lot of length. He could really just be a rim protector that's going to be just vital to them in the paint. It's another guy I would think with all that experience kind of early in the season, you want to get him going a little bit in terms yeah. of that confidence. Yeah, I mean, if he feels good about what he's doing, it's only going to benefit the team later on in the season. If they know they can go to him and he's confident that I can do this, I belong on the floor, it's, it's going to be better. i got to tell you, the guy that I'm really excited about is Joe Ellicone. And Joe's a guy who last year, not a lot expected of him uh, early in the year. And what does he do? But he becomes that sixth man scoring punch off the bench, hits a game winning three in the season's first week, comes back and really, you know, didn't drop off of that play at all. It wasn't a lightning in a bottle situation at all for Joe. He was consistent as could be all last season coming off the bench. Now he moves into that starting role. I would not be surprised at all with given that he may not be the first or second or third name on opposing defenses uh, kind of shot charts that if more often than not, you see Joe going for 18 or 22 points. He can be that guy that, that really fills up the stat sheet. Um, anybody else that you're, that you're loving out there on, on Cougar Land? I mean, I don't want to give Rohan too much play. It's going to go to his head. But, uh, I mean, no, there's a lot of guys out there that are just they're going to be exciting to watch because the team ball is what makes it great to watch. And when you know whoever's hands it's in, they can score. It's, it's going to make it just every minute you can't. Can't talk away. Well, I know as a, you're a big Joel Embiid guy. I know that. So whenever Embiid steps back beyond that three-point line, you're a, you're a huge fan. Is that yeah. why? Is that why you're giving Ron? Well, uh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's a big part of it. When you've got the post game and the three-point game, it's you can't beat that. That's the, you know the best kind of player to be. Well, we'll give you a chance to come back and uh, give him a little bit of love here yourself. Uh, we're going to take a break. We'll be back with senior captains Kevin Fromelt and Rohan Prakash, all while we continue in the Meyer preseason tip-off show. Stick with us. We'll be back. You are caught in the Meyer. This is the Montgomery Internet Radio Experience. Welcome back to the Meyer preseason tip-off show. Keith Glock and Matt Pogue here with you. Matt, uh, I want to get into the schedule a little bit with you because uh, you, a team uniquely equipped with the talent that this team has will bring some unique challenges. As you take a look at the schedule, what stands out to you as, the, as you know, a date or dates to watch? Uh, well, a couple come to mind. I mean, every team loves to have a measuring stick to see where you are during the season, and one of them is going to be coming up in January here in the Cougars Den, Gil St. Bernard's. So you got a name that everybody knows, Paul Mulcahy, he'll be here, and that's something that they're going to have to really see. How can they deal with him, and you know, what does he actually bring to the court? Let's talk Paul Mulcahy for a second to kind of put this into perspective for everybody out there. Um, he's about as talented a player as Montgomery maybe has ever seen. Where do you think he ranks in terms of, um, as a high school player at least, you know, I don't want to project out because of the guys like Carl Towns and, you know, whatever that are playing in the NBA and, you know, and, and all that. But as a high school player, where do you think Mulcahy kind of ranks uh, in the team, in, or rather the players that Montgomery's seen through the years? I mean, it, it might be, I hate to say one, it might, it might be one. Somebody that can do a little bit of everything and at that level, it's, it's going to be a handful to deal with. I actually have to agree with you. I would love to sit here and disagree with you because it's one of my most favorite things to do in you life. You are very good at that. But, but uh, he is uh, about as good a player as there is, and I'm sure that I'll, I'll tell the story you know, when we get there. Uh, his mother was my neighbor growing up. We lived around the block from each other. If I broke into a sprint at my front door, uh, I would have been at her front door in about 45 seconds. Uh, so I've known them a long time, just a really, really good family. That kind of makes me uh, dislike them a little bit more, actually, because I know they're really nice people and we have to play against them. Uh, anybody else on, on the schedule that stands out for you? Um, yeah, Rutgers Prep is going to be another one. Um, you know, they're going up there. This could be conference implications. This could be something that they're actually, you know, needing to win this game to kind of show that we can win this conference because they might be seeing them again for that. Hopefully the first on the road to three of the titles that, that this team is in search of, for sure. Um, well, Matt, appreciate your uh, time and insight here on our first segment of the Meyer Season Tip-Off Show. And uh, we didn't 
We didn't stick you with too many needles here, did we? No, it wasn't terrible. I mean, slightly painful, you know. It's all right. All right we'll get better as this as the season goes on. We're going to come back. We're going to have uh, captains Kevin Fromelt and Rohan Prakash, and we're also going to have head coach Chris Grundy all before we wrap up the Meyer season tip-off show. Opening night for Montgomery basketball, Friday, December 14th. It'll be here before you know it. We'll be right back. You're caught in the mire. This is the Montgomery Internet Radio Experience. Welcome back to the Meyer Boys Basketball Tip-Off Show. We're joined now by two of the team's six captains, Kevin Fromelt and Rohan Prakash. And Rohan, I promise I'll get your name right on this one. <laughs> with the, the running commentary and the joke is that uh, I don't think your last name sounds as great on the radio as when I mispronounce <laughs> it on purpose. Uh, so, and I'm going to keep doing it because I just think it's better. So, you know, deal with that and, until we don't. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, guys, uh, pretty exciting season uh, on tap for you. Kev. Um, you enter this season, you know, with possibly the most tenure of any player ever, with given how much you played as a freshman, um, and then, you know, certainly the last two years being one of the main cogs as, uh, you know, this team has moved forward. What have you learned, given all of that experience, that has made you a different player now from when you were a freshman? Well, a lot of athletes talk about getting in the zone, and for me, I've learned, uh, like, what that means for me is to be focused on like a whole nother level where you're like you just you're all all you're focused about is is making the shot and in addition to that focus uh i'm really i've worked on my confidence as a as a player and just like believing in myself like nobody else i'm a, my biggest fan and uh i just you know finding getting to that really high confidence and that really high focus is what gets me in the zone all right so what does this team have that previous ones haven't had? What's different about you? What's special? Well, a lot of us are returning starters this year. So we return a lot of experience, a lot of chemistry. And, um, you know, we've been playing together since we were in third grade, most of us. So, you know, we all know what uh, each other, each other's habits and tendencies. Uh, in addition to that, we've got six guys that can score in a multitude of ways. And you know, that, that makes us dangerous to a lot of different teams because they, if they put two guys on me, then I'm gonna give it to Roe. If they put two guys on Roe, then give it to Riley. You know, we got a ton of guys that can score in, in many different ways, so. Ron, there, there's a play last year, and I'm fairly certain you're gonna remember it because uh, it sticks out to me. Uh, there's a play that, and Coach Grundy has run this play through the years back when you were in middle school. Uh, it's designed to get an alley-oop uh, kind of, in the past it's been a layup. And we've had plenty of guys that have been your height and taller that have been on the receiving end of that alley-oop play wide open and it's resulted in a layup. And last year at home, and I don't even remember who it was against, but I remember what happened caught me completely off guard because that play came out after having not been run for a couple of years. And what do you do? Well, you go up above the rim and you take it and throw it down and not a timid, like, <laughs> oh, maybe this one's going to be. You, I mean, with authority to, to dunk that basketball, and it became not only just like an, an outside piece of this, but a real part of your game. What does it take to have that kind of confidence? And how did you develop that to be the guy that's going to say, no, 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 this is going to be a dunk? Well. In order for any team to win, there has to be like a certain level of energy. And when you dunk a basketball, that creates that sort of energy and that momentum for your team to go on a run. So every time, you know, you go up, every time I go up for a dunk, you have to have that mentality like, I'm about to start something, like we're about to start a run here. And um, that's kind of what I push for, is that once you get that energy on the team, it's not going to stop. That momentum's gonna, just going to keep going, and that offense is going to turn into stops on defense, which is going to turn into more offense. And, you know, it's just going to really push our team to go on a run. Because you, you guys had run that play previous to it, but it was on the road. Am I, am I yeah. right in saying that? And that was really the first time at home. Mm -hmm. did, did you feel that juice after, the, after that happened? Yeah, yeah. Oh, like we, the, everyone was fired up. 
I, everyone was fired up. I remember uh, we got a steal on the other end, came down, uh, and I think it was Mac who got fouled uh, on a layup on the other end. And um, I mean, we were just we were just really hype uh, after that, and we ended up winning that game. So, I mean, that energy is very important for our team. All right, so dunks, we expect that from you. We see your height, you're a legit seven footer now, by now, almost. So we expect that. <laughs> He's humble, he won't say that. But we, we see that and we see your height, but you also shoot the three ball really well. You also go inside out. We know that you have a post game. So what made you want to start stepping out of the paint? You know, anyone can be a post player and anyone can be a three point shooter. But in order to be both, uh, it, like, it's, you have to be more special um, in order to do that. And, um, a defense that's playing against that isn't really going to be able to have too many options to guard both a post player and a three-point shooter. Because if you're standing on the perimeter, they're not going to know if you're going to drive by or if you're going to pull up for a three. So it really confuses the defense and it opens up more options on the offense because now the defense is more focused on you as a player and that leaves the other people on the floor more open. And um, as Kevin said, everyone who steps on the floor can score. So really being an inside and an outside player causes a lot of problems for a defense that plays against us. Kev, you touched on, you know, being together with this group of guys for, you know, what seems like I'm sure forever for you guys now. And it's resulted in something that has never existed here. Six captains. That's an anomaly on any team. Okay. How has that dynamic kind of played itself out now for you guys from the time that you started practice uh, until right now? And, you know, what separates you know, this group and these six captains that that's able to function properly? Well, everybody has a role on the team. Certain guys are there to score. Certain guys are there to bring the energy every day. Certain guys are the, the people that have to you know, help others out, like help the freshmen out. You know, everybody has to do their part in order to make this family, to make this team work. So you know, just having six captains, it just, you know, it, it helps to you know, sp um, to get everybody involved. And, and, and I'm interested in both of your take on this. It's 2018, right? We watch the NFL all the time. It, the, all the rules are made for the offense. Everything that we do highlights. There's not, not a lot of defensive highlights on SportsCenter. It's an offensive world in 2018. A lot of guys that can score this year for you guys. And it seems like you're going to have the freedom to, to do that in terms of the way the offense is structured. Just from a fun standpoint, how, how cool is it to be able to say, like, look at what we could potentially do here and playing in this offense? What's that like for you guys on a daily basis in practice? Well, it really, it really takes a lot of pressure off like an individual player because knowing that everyone on the court can, can score, you know, you're not really concerned when one person catches the ball like, oh, is he just going to turn the ball over? Or, oh, oh, is he just going to continue passing it? Because you'll never know. Because everyone on the court can rip by and score. Everyone can shoot the, shoot the ball. So it really makes it special because, again, the defense never knows what we're capable of on the floor. Is there a sense of like potentially having to be less unselfish, if that makes sense? It's almost a double negative, but you know, somebody's going to have to make a play at the end of a game, and, and you may be tempted to make maybe almost one too many extra passes, or you, do you have to feel selfish at certain times? I think you just you look at what the defense is giving you, and if they're giving you the look, you take it. And rise and fire mentality. Rise and fire. That's, that's what <laughs> that's it how, is. That's how we play. It's a great catchphrase. The, there's something that's written on the back of your shirts that uh, I want, you know, it turns into a very personal thing, uh, I think, for everybody that comes through the program, and that's the concept of family. And it's, uh, it feels like, you know, as certainly somebody who's on the outside, it feels like it's not just a tagline. For each of you guys, what has that concept of family meant to you through the years, you know, uh, I mean, I guess since you've been at the high school, but maybe you, you felt it even before you got here. Well, we talk about how, you know, Family never graduates, so you know this. This, this is more than just on the court. This is like what we do uh, on the weekend nights and the weekend days as a team. You know, we 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 go get meals together, we hang out, and watch games. It's that's what this family is all about. Bro, what about for you? I mean, we as Kev said, you know, we're brothers on and off the court, and you know, we hang out pretty much pretty much every day. I would say pretty much every day, um, whether it's on the court or whether we're getting food. And it really helps um, 
even hanging out outside of basketball, it really helps us on the court because you know we know each other so well that, uh, like for example, um, we'll, as Kev said before, we'll know each other's habits on and off the floor, and that really helps to give almost like a support system to each other, and um, it it again it like brings energy and like we can really support each other, which helps us a lot. Yeah, I mean unselfishness is definitely a theme that I've been hearing in every single answer. You guys almost hesitate to even say like no 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 me 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 so I mean where does where does that come from where does it all start I mean it just I think when you play as a team it you know it, it just works out better against the uh, the better teams that we are gonna, that we're gonna face you know if you just go one-on-one -on -one the whole game it's not gonna work but we have the we have the capability to do that but we're you know we know that to, to go as far uh, as we want to and to win the, you know, the conference, the county, and the state tournament, we know that we have to play as a team. The perfect segue to my final question. And either both of you jump in on this. What is this team capable of achieving? As I just said, I mean, winning the conference, winning the county, winning the state is what we aspire to do every year. So, you know, we're, we're, we definitely think we can reach all those goals and, you know, we just got to leave it all out in the court. Boys, it's been a pleasure. Thanks for joining us. Yep. Thank right, you. We'll be back with the rest of the Meyer Boys Basketball Season Tip-Off Show coming up right after this. Welcome back to the Meyer preseason tip-off show. We are interrupting the uh, daily health, net, uh, health and fitness routine, <laughs> routine of the head coach of your Cougars, Chris Grundy. Coach, what's going on, man? Uh, nothing much. Judging by the size of my face in this picture, I think I need to get out here a little bit more often. We might have some people vomit while watching this. It's just <laughs> the way it might go, but that's the price of doing business here in 2018. So thanks for taking a couple of minutes, obviously. Um, we had a chance a little earlier to talk to a couple of the guys, uh, Kevin and, and Rohan, and um, the word excitement, I mean, just kept getting thrown around there. You know, for you, this is now... Uh, year, are you in year 14? 14. 14. Okay. Yeah. And so, so on the excitement scale, take us through kind of where you are. Yeah, I mean it's uh, it's an exciting time at the at the start of every season. Um, you know, you're you're always excited for uh, what could be. Um, obviously, with this group, um, you know, it's ratcheted up a little bit just because of what we've been able to do in the summer and what we've been able to do in the fall and so far in the preseason. Um, you know, it's, 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 we had our tip off dinner last Friday and I was telling the people in attendance that it's crazy that we've had 11 seniors make it through all that we ask of our guys, um, you know, in the off season and no need to go down that road again. We know what's asked of our guys. Um, so I'm just excited for them. This group of 11, um, you know, really deserves hopefully all the accolades that are going to be coming to them uh, late March. So, you know, as you kind of start down another one of these journeys, just for you personally, kind of, you know, where do you fall? Like, is this like the excited part of the season? Or are you on some levels thinking about it as like, oh, here we are again with the grind? Like, what are the emotions? <laughs> um... You know, it's it's very exciting. Um, I, I, I told again to reference the tip-off dinner on Friday. Um, I told everybody there that um, I'm definitely nervous um, for this season, and 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 only nervous. Um, and I feel a lot of pressure, but only those two things, just because I want so badly for this group to be able to put some numbers up on that banner because of how hard they've worked and all they've sacrificed and all that their families have sacrificed for this basketball family. Um, I just really, like I said, I, I want them to, to have, um, you know, the accolades at the end of the season. And hopefully, uh, hopefully there'll be a lot of those um, that accompany us at the end. You know, you're 
uh, kind of mantra of what you guys are looking to accomplish, you know, in terms of how the talent matches up with some of those expectations this year. Um, this could be the most talented team that you, you know, you've had with apologies to a lot of really, really good teams, you know, sure. that you've coached. Um, that in and of itself, I, I would have to believe breeds a pretty competitive atmosphere at practice. Yeah. Yeah. No, it does. It does. And, um, you know, and, and, and the guys that maybe not be in the, that maybe aren't in the rotation right now, um, they're working their butts off because they want to crack that lineup. Um, you know, when the alumni come back, uh, you know, you referenced all the hype that's going along with this team. And then, you know, the alumni come back, whether it's Greg Tarka or Darren Wallace or Chase Tao or Matt Remsen. Um, and these guys come back and they play against our guys. They want nothing more than to, uh, than to shut them up a little bit. So it definitely creates a nice competitive atmosphere in practice for sure. So let's play a little word association before I, but I will go deeper into some of the guys, but I'm going to just throw some names and I want you to like in two or three words, first thing that just kind of comes to your mind. Okay. Rohan Prakash. Athletically a freak. Um, what he can do at six seven, actually, his coach, Coach Leffler from Hopkins, just texted me this morning, and uh, <clears throat> you know, checking in on his guy, and uh, you know, there were three or four times yesterday where Roe blocked a shot or got a defensive rebound and led the fast break for us. Um, you know, and at six seven, should a guy be able to do that? I guess in today's basketball, some guys do, but I mean, we haven't seen a guy that tall be able to do the things that he does offensively and defensively maybe ever, maybe since Ryan McCoy, um, you know, so, uh, so he's obviously a big part of what we're going to do. And, and they were even different players too. I, I think, you know, the, the way that McCoy was defensively, you know, he felt like much more of a, of a guard, you know, yep. or a, you know, a, a three than, than anything else. Agreed. Um, Kevin from out. Leader. Kev's been, uh, you know, I feel good for Kev. Kev's been waiting for, for this opportunity to, to be a captain and to, uh, and to lead this team as a senior since he got a couple spot starts as a freshman. And, um, you know, Coach Dunn from Gettysburg still checks in, you know, once or twice a week asking me how Kev's doing. Um, you know, he's just like Ro. He's going to be a huge part of what we do for sure. Riley Green. <laughs> competitor tough as nails he um you know we use the expression all the time gym rap but man he he just can't get enough he if he could play basketball 24 7 i think he would and uh he's as competitive as they come he's the one hooting and hollering in practice um in games getting the guys going um his plus minus for us um is through the roof so again <laughs> i sound like a broken record another uh big big piece of what we're going to do this year hopefully joe Alicone. <sighs> unbelievable team player unbelievable team players joe Alicone. joe his maturation as a player since the end of last season to where we are right now has been absolutely unbelievable um you know there there's been times this summer, this fall, in the preseason, where he's been our most valuable player on the court. What he can do at the top of the, at the top of our various defenses, um, what he's been able to do offensively, um, he's he's been unreal, absolutely unreal. Just a couple more, Kyle Howard. Tough. Kyle's another one that's just a really really tough kid. He's a tough matchup um, for other teams because he can play inside, he can play outside. Um, again, he's, a, he's, a, he's another one that's going to be real important to what we're trying to do defensively with our various looks because he can defend a four or five, uh, but he can also defend on the perimeter as well. So, um, you know, he's just a tough, tough, tough kid. Um, and like I said, a tough matchup on both ends. Will Maripodi. Family. When you think of <clears throat> this basketball program, I'd like to say, if you think of this basketball program 
and all that it encompasses. Um, you got to think of a player like Will Maripoti, who a month before the season started, came into the coach's room and said, hey, coach, for senior night, um, I just want to let you know I'm fine not starting. You know, obviously the, the first group that starts every night are going to be seniors, and then there's six of us that don't start. And I'm, I, I just want to let you know I'm, I'm fine being the guy that doesn't start on senior night. I mean, we're talking four, five, six weeks before the season even starts. And that's what and that's what Will's thinking about. You don't find that every day. Last one, and this is a guy that uh, Matt Pogue during the other portion of our preview show said was the guy that he was most interested to watch, uh, Christopher Bio. Growing and maturing. Um, each, <laughs> each. I hope he still grows. Each and every day, uh, in practice or in scrimmages, you've seen Chris grow as a player. And um, again, man, he's he gives us that opportunity to spell Rohan at times, um, where it's not every day if you have a six-seven kid that you can get him off the floor and you actually gain an inch. Um, you know, with Chris coming in at six-eight, so he. Uh, he knows what we need from him this year at the offensive and defensive end, and he's, he's been growing and maturing every day, which has been great. 11 seniors, six captains. Yeah. They're huge numbers. How is yep. the – I mean, from, from what I can understand from the guys, it's working out how you wanted it to work out. But, it, I mean, that's certainly probably difficult decisions for you as you, as you get into it, I would think. Yeah. Um, I mean, difficult – Difficult, I guess, just because people are going to be like, oh, it's basketball, only five guys play at a time, and you have six captains. So that's the only reason why it was difficult. I mean, you have six players that deserve this honor. You have six players that have led both on and off the court, um, and you have six guys who are more than deserving of, of this title. And, uh, you know, I don't really think about – you know, who's going to perform this part of a captaincy or that part of a captaincy. These guys are, are great leaders and they're going to figure it out. You know, like they already started going out two at a time for scrimmages or three at a time for scrimmages. It's not like I had to say, all right, you two guys are going to be together. You two guys are going to be together. You two guys are going to be together. They're just, they're, you know, it helps when you grow up together and you love playing together and you love each other as people. And, and that's what you have with, not just the six captains, but the 11 seniors as a whole. A little bit of a, a shake-up in the coaching staff. Uh, Matt Morgan, now the uh, head coach of the Lady Cougs, yep. uh, was your varsity assistant last year. Tommy Molar's got a promotion. Uh, how's that working out for you guys? Uh, we miss Coach Morgan for sure. Um, you know, he did such a tremendous job for us um, as a coach. Um, you know, again, just like, uh, just like with the players – you know, the, the coaches have to sacrifice a lot too. And it takes a very special group, and I've been fortunate enough to have it. It takes a special group to want to show up at the gym at 6 o'clock in the morning in July um, or in August. And and then after that, you have camp all day, and then you got to go to a scrimmage or a, or a summer league game or whatever. And Coach Margon did that for us. Um, you know, but I know that – you know, he's going to do an absolute tremendous job for the girls. I'm happy for the girls program um, because he's a phenomenal coach. Um, so definitely rough, rough to lose him, but great to be able to slide one of our own, Josh Prevost, into the freshman uh, coaching slot. You know, Tommy is, is, you know, right next to me as a varsity assistant, which is phenomenal. And, and Coach Bassford, obviously, back for another year as our JV coach. Um, and then I got so many guys who are willing to help out, whether it's Aaron Thomas who showed up for our scrimmage and did our defensive execution chart or Mike Remsen, who's still breaking down film from pace. Um, so we're fine for sure. Uh, I'm very fortunate and blessed to have the support that I have. I'm going to break with tradition for like one little piece of a second here, because uh, you know, the running joke for those people who are new to the Meyer is, is that I always end the first interview with, what are your goals, coach? As if I don't understand what's going on. Okay, so I'm going to break with that tradition because uh, we understand it's county, it's conference, it's state. Yep. One, of, one of the things that I've 
kind of admired most about your program and, and as you look at coaches around uh, different sports at different levels it, it, it seems as though the consistency that a staff and, and a head coach uh, the more consistency I should say that a staff and a head coach bring to a team and a program the more successful over the long term it can be your consistent goals of county conference and state how much does it benefit this particular team with so much experience that it is not as though this now because of the of the senior laden team and the talent laden that you have that all of a sudden it's now new lofty goals like that was it from day one and it's still it does that help 100 percent because that and, and we talk about this a lot whether it's at practices or or in the preseason like there's no situation that these guys should ever face this year that is new or unusual to them because, you know, Kevin Fromelt, three-year permanent starter and started a couple games as, fre- as a freshman. Rohan, you know, got a lot of, got some playing time as a sophomore, started, you know, now the next two years. Kyle Howard played a lot as a sophomore. Um, Joe Ellicone was a big part of what we did last year. Um, Riley Green, obviously a starter last year. So the experience is through the roof with these guys. And you can't – and in high school basketball, high school athletics, I should say, I think confidence and experience is so, so valuable. You know, like Chris Raba, who's a friend of mine, head coach in Nottingham, went to the Tournament of Champions semifinals last year, um, does a great job down there. He told me he's, he's super excited for our season – Um, He loves our team, but he said, he he goes, you're so blessed to have 11 seniors because he goes, I firmly believe that as a public school, you can't win championships unless you have seniors. And we're fortunate to have 11 great ones. I mean, you may have just answered this question with that, but uh, I'll ask it anyway. Is this the most equipped team you have to accomplish those three goals since you've been there? Yeah, I, I, I would say they're, I would say they're right up there, you know, the 27 and two team had Kovacevic and Chase coming back as starters. Um, you know, we had two unknowns in Miller and Wallace, but we thought that, you know, we knew that they were going to be pretty good. Um, you know, and then you had Timmy and Greg, Timmy and F. Greg Tarka, who started to see some playing time towards the end of that seat of their junior year. So we had some experience coming back and we thought we were going to be pretty good, but as far as experience, um, both on and off the floor in leadership roles, this is definitely a very equipped team. Now, are we going to get the job done? You know, who knows? I'd like to think that we are, but, you know, I guess only God knows the answer to that. So we'll find out starting uh, in a couple of days. Coach, it is a pleasure as always. and looking forward to a lot of fun times this season. <laughs> From your mouth to God's ears, as you know, I like to say. Thank you, sir. My pleasure. We'll be back uh, with the conclusion of the Meyer Boys Basketball Season tip-off show right after this. You're caught in the Meyer. It's the Montgomery Internet Radio Experience.